Hello, everyone. <laughs> Let me start by taking you back in time. 1974, Star Trek animated series. That's when the holodeck makes its first appearance. What an amazing concept. You step into this magical room, you choose the reality you want to be in, and you're immediately teleported to a new virtual world. A virtual world that's perfectly simulated. I believe that many people here in the audience, myself included, grew up on Star Trek and Holodeck, and we have watched many Holodeck scenes. While the concept itself was totally fictional, it was able to capture people's imagination, influence and inspire kids, adults, scientists, and storytellers for many, many years to come. And that begs the question, can a holodeck really become reality? Is it even possible? Well, is it really possible to simulate a virtual world to the extent that it's indistinguishable from reality? In theory, it is, but it's really, really hard. To begin with, you need great headsets. But on top of that, you need to be able to simulate your senses. You need to create virtual walls that look right, need the graphics to be photorealistic, indistinguishable from reality. You need the virtual world to sound right. You need to be able to simulate sounds in the virtual environment. You need the virtual world to look right, to feel right. You need the virtual world to obey to the laws of physics. Everything has to be physically simulated. And above all, you want to be able to interact in the virtual world in the same way you interact in the real world. Simulating reality in the 70s. It may surprise some of you, but virtual reality is not a new technology. The first attempts to simulate reality started in the late 60s, right around the time that Holodeck was introduced. Here on the left, you see the world's first, the RHMD, built by Ivan Sutherland from MIT. And here is a cool video. That's how it looked like. <laughs> if you complain about motion sickness with today's headset, just imagine what he had to go through. <laughs> But that's when attempts to simulate reality started. So the VR technology wasn't quite there. What about graphics? The Atari 2600. Who played with the Atari 2600? I just want to make sure that I'm not too old for this audience. Great. My favorite console ever. And as for the graphics technology in the late 70s, is what you see on the left. In case you don't recognize him, that's Indiana Jones represented in <laughs> represented in 28 pixels so that was the graphics technology and that was the vr technology back in the day in the early 70s fast forward early 90s in the early 90s the vr technology has improved resolution got better tracking got better and yet the quality wasn't quite there. It wasn't anywhere near to what we define as consumer VR headset. It was bulky, it was expensive, quality wasn't just there. And in terms of graphics quality, the games got a lot more interactive, a lot more interesting, but the visual quality wasn't quite there. It wasn't until the mid 90s with the advent of the GPU and with more innovation and advancement in graphics technology that led to major breakthroughs in simulating reality, driven mostly by Nvidia, that brought us to the point where we are today. This is an actual screenshot from a game. The game is Paragon, published by Epic Game, built on top of Unreal Engine 4. It's quite a difference from the Indiana Jones that you saw on previous slide. <laughs> Tens of millions of polygons, interesting geometry, very sophisticated lighting and shading effects. It just looks and feels real. This is possible today to render in real time using consumer graphics cards. Not only is it possible to render it in real time, you can render it at 90 frames per second at a very low latency and bring this level of visual quality to a virtual reality environment. How is that even possible? This is, this is possible with today's simulation engine, a very powerful product line of simulation engines of graphics cards. So NVIDIA has a full line of, of GPUs that are VR ready that can drive amazing VR experience, but this is the king of the hill, the cream of the crop. Titan X. It packs 11 teraflops of compute power and 12 gigabytes of memory in a single graphics card. Just to put things in perspective, 11 teraflops of compute power, that's a lot of compute power. The world's first teraflop supercomputer was introduced in the late 90s. 
for those of you who remember, the code name was ASCII Red, took more than 7,000 compute nodes, and the size of the computer was 2,500 square feet, pretty much the size of this room. Now we're able to pack more than 10 times this compute power in a single chip that's this size in a single graphics card. Why do you need so much horsepower? For one, you need to render beautiful scenes. That's the main purpose of a graphics card. But on top of that, you need to be able to simulate reality. You need to be able to simulate your senses. And to begin with, you want to build a world that obeys to the laws of physics. And what do I mean by that? In the virtual reality world, in the virtual world, there are no tricks, there are no shortcuts. Everything has to be physically simulated. The water has to look like water, has to behave like water. Fire has to look like fire and behave like fire. Same applies to smoke. All the objects must be collidable. If you're in a VR experience and something doesn't look or feels real, you'll notice that right away. Presence will be broken, the experience will be destroyed, and you will get pulled out of the virtual experience, put back in the real world. And the real world is not fun after being in VR. But that's what happened. Every, every single piece, every single object in the virtual rea reality has to be physically simulated. Now it's easier said than done. It takes a lot of compute power to do it and render the scene in real time. But it is definitely possible with today's GPU. I'm going to show you a video. The video um, shows the, uh, what can be done with, with our GameWorks technology. Here you're going to see fire rendered in real time. Note the interaction between the fire and the metal plate. So everything that you're about to see was rendered in real time. Fire and smoke look real. Every single pixel in the scene is physically simulated. So you need to be able to simulate every single pixel and display it in real time. Not only does the fire and the smoke need to be real, the interaction between the metal plate and the smoke and the fire has to look and feel real as well. I can watch it for hours. Not because I enjoy a fire, it's just love computer graphics. So this is what's possible today with NVIDIA's GameWorks technologies. Virtual world that feel right. We are happy, we are delighted to see more and more developers using our physics libraries along with our GPUs to simulate touch sensations. Touch is a very important sense in a virtual reality experience. In order to immerse yourself in a virtual environment, you need to be able to simulate touch sensations in real time. When you throw a ball, when you touch a surface, when you hit an object with the hammer, the touch sensations are very different. And in order to immerse yourself in the virtual environment, you need to be able to simulate that in real time. Our physics libraries allow developers to do that. They're integrated in all the major game engines. You can do that by using um, tactile, vibrotactile feedback or force feedback in a controller. Or you can do what one of our lead developers, Axon VR, does. Do it with a glove. Down the road, they're going to do it with a haptic suit. So fully simulated, um, fully simulated touch sensation using a haptic suit. That's the holiday in practice. Sound, such a critical sense that has to be perfectly simulated in VR. Michael Abras, the chief scientist, or he's heading up the research team at Oculus, used to say that the right sound in VR is, the sound in VR is not an addition, it's a multiplier. It's a force multiplier that makes you really believe in what you see once you get the sound right in VR. Right? Very much like simulating physical environments, simulating sound is extremely difficult. We know how to do directional audio. We know how to do positional audio. These are solved problems. But in a virtual reality environment, you need to be able to simulate the sound propagation in the virtual space, taking into account the geometry of the scene that's changing in real time, taking into account the material property of the scene. So that was not able. We were not able to do that before, but now we are. And there is an SDK. We have it integrated into Unreal Engine 4, and we're making it available to developers. We're using our optic simulation, simulating engine in our GPU that's being used for ray tracing. Now we can simulate effects such as reflection, diffraction, occlusion, absorption, and to simulate how sound moves in space. 
does make a huge difference in enabling a great VR experience. Once you do that, you cannot really look back. Virtual world that act right. This is a screenshot from a game. It was a game that, um, it's a game that was released by Ubisoft just a couple of days ago, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Uh, it's really a fun game, multiplayer, co-op. I encourage you all to download and play. But I've included this in my deck for a specific reason. This game will include a feature that will allow you to issue voice commands to computer-controlled characters. Right? For the first time, you will be able to interact with objects in the virtual environment using your voice, the same way you interact with people in the real world. That was made possible using IBM's Watson speech-to-text technology. That's an artificial intelligence deep learning technology. They're leveraging our GPUs to do that. And that's quite revolutionary. This is the first time, to my knowledge, that AI deep learning is being incorporated in consumer uh, VR applications. But you're going to see that more and more. And obviously, NVIDIA is extremely excited about that. AI, deep learning, artificial intelligence is absolutely key to enable more realistic virtual environment. It's absolutely key to enable natural interaction between people in the virtual space and between you in the virtual space. So all those amazing technologies are packaged in our SDK, software development kits, that are available for the developers. This is a huge area of focus for NVIDIA. We'll continue to innovate. We'll continue to expand. We offer it to our ecosystem partners. That's our way to allow the ecosystem partners to tap into all the goodness that we deliver in our hardware as well as in our software. We have features that allow developers to build beautiful virtual worlds, increasing the visual quality, reducing latency. We have libraries that allow developers to simulate sound at the virtual space, build more realistic haptics. And we have captures SDK as well. There are a couple of ways to deliver a virtual reality experience. One, you can render the scene. You can build a virtual world using computer graphics. And the other way is to capture the scene and to deliver it to VR or AR headset, ideally in real time. At GTC, the GPU technology conference, earlier this month, we demonstrated real-time capture, multiple cameras in stereo streamed live to a VR headset. This SDK is available, and we encourage you to download to try it. This is just the beginning. We have mono, mono stitch, stereo stitch, and we are looking into volumetric capture as well. So simulating reality using computer graphics, delivering an amazing virtual reality using cameras are definitely two areas of focus for NVIDIA. Project Holodeck. With all this amazing technology in place, we decided to embark on a new project, an ambitious project that we refer to internally as Project Holodeck. And the idea is to show the world what's possible in VR. We want designers, we want content creators to bring in photorealistic models. We want to see the graphics that you're currently seeing in the most advanced games, in the most advanced models, to bring it into a virtual reality experience. We want to enable collaboration. We want to aim for the highest level of interactivity, to have people collaborate in the virtual environment and interact with each other the same way they interact in real life. And the other piece is key to enable a physically simulated environment. We showed the first demo of Project Holodeck at the GPU Technology Conference earlier this month. I'm going to show you a video. In this video, we rendered the Koenigsegg car. And in order to create a photorealistic model, we used the actual CAD model of the cars. Every single piece of the car has been rendered to the highest level of quality. Okay? And it was rendered in real time. We used more than 50 million polygons we brought a few people to the virtual environment, including Christian Koenigsegg himself from Sweden. And they, all, they were all able to review the model in real time, apply changes, and enjoy the experience. This is how it looked like.
ahead and draw that mustache. Stay still. That's quite amazing. 50 million polygons. This level of visual quality is, is we are not seeing it today in VR, but we have a mission to bring it into a virtual environment. And we're going to work hard to make it happen. So the holodeck is just one piece of our strategy. We in VDR are absolutely committed to moving this ecosystem forward. VR and AR are key to our growth. We're investing a lot of time, effort, um, hours. And we're going to work with you, the ecosystem partners, to address the biggest challenges in VR and AR. How are we going to do that? Our strategy is based on multiple elements. For one, it's hardware. You need, you need a lot of computer graphics horsepower. And we'll continue to scale in performance, performance per dollar, performance per watt. We're going to bring a new level of performance to a virtual reality experience. The SDK VR works. Again, huge area of focus for us. We'll continue to expand. We'll continue to innovate across multiple sensors. And you're going to see more and more um, features from us. And as for the applications, we're not in the app business, but we feel that we need to build applications for VR to show the world what's possible. And for the highest level of visual quality to the highest level of interactivity to the highest level of simulation. That's what we did with Funhouse. That's what we're going to do with Holodeck. And that's what we're going to do going forward. So is a real Holodeck close to reality? I guess I'm going to leave it open, but I'm going to make a couple of points. One, we're nowhere near the limits of human perception. There is a long, long way to go. In sound, in visual, in touch, it will take a lot of time, it will take a lot of effort, it will take a lot of investment, and it will take a lot of collaboration between companies and between the ecosystem partners. But if you remember the Indiana Jones, the 28 pixels Indiana Jones from my previous slide, right? And think of where we were 30 years ago and look at computer graphics just 15 years ago, and look at the progress that has been made in the past 15 years. And do your own extrapolation. Just think of where we can be in 15 years from now. We have a lot of good reasons to be optimistic. Thank you so much.